Why do tyres get fewer punctures, but not why you think? Back in March, I was able to visit Pirelli's R&D research labs in Milan, and it was absolutely fascinating. Now, what I'm going to tell you today hasn't been shown before, and it has the potential to help you get fewer punctures, but also improve the grip of your tyres and make them last longer. So let's get to it. Pirelli is all about performance tyres and has over 2,000 employees involved in engineering research. The brilliant thing about their research labs is that they share information across all of their tyre development. So the things that are researched for Formula One and superbikes are used to better understand cycling tyres and vice versa. Synergy. A little David Brent reference for you there. Anyhow, uh, here at GCN, I'm, I'm proud to say that Pirelli are one of our sponsors. I want to be completely transparent with you about that. And having our sponsors like Pirelli makes videos like this possible. But the R&D and research that Pirelli's done, and I'm going to talk about in this video, applies to all tyres. So, you know, if you're not using Pirelli tyres, don't, don't freak out. Like, this is relevant to you too. Some of the most interesting studies that they've carried out is research into contact patches. But before I explain about how this can make you faster, we first need to just have a quick refresh and an understanding of what exactly is a contact patch and why it's important. The contact patch is the part of the tyre that is in contact with the road surface and it's impacted by a number of variables. Firstly, the width of the tyre. A wider tyre will have a wider contact patch. Next, the deformation of the tyre. A tyre that deforms more, my squidges down more, will also have a wider contact patch. And that deformation is impacted by the pressure inside the tyre and the tyre's structure, i.e. how strong the sidewall construction is. A weaker construction will cause more deformation. And the other thing impacting contact patch is the force pressing down on it. So the combined weight of you and your bike. The tread pattern can also impact uh, the contact patch, but on a road bike tyre, this is minimal. It's something that's more prevalent on motorbike and car tyres. And now you understand all of that, we can delve a bit more into the science of the contact patch and how Pirelli has looked into it and optimised it. And the first thing that they've done is some pressure mapping studies. So one of the first things they did was to measure the amount of pressure or force on the contact patch for different vehicles. And this blew my mind. So question time for you. What do you think has more force uh, at the bottom of its tyres? A 70 kilogram rider on 23 millimetre tyres, Valentino Rossi on a superbike, or a 1600 kilogram BMW? Well, the correct answer, by a significant margin, is a road cyclist on 23mm tyres. Give yourself a pat on the back if you got that right, and uh, why not reward yourself with a, a visit uh, to buy some merch from shop.globalcyclingnetwork. While this may seem counterintuitive, it does make sense. And a really good high school physics analogy for this is an elephant's hoof versus a stiletto heel. So. If you imagine uh, an, an elephant's hoof, it actually exerts less uh, pressure in pounds per square inch on the ground, uh, whereas a woman in stilettos, all that force, it's a smaller amount of mass, but it's concentrated into a much tinier like surface area, and it's spread over just two hooves. You get the gist, uh, meaning that a stiletto heel exerts far more pressure on the ground, and that's why a lot of floors say no stiletto heels, because they'll mark the floor. And the same thing is going on with bikes, even compared to really wide tyres, like 285 millimetre wide, you know, rear tyres that you get on, you know, performance vehicles like a BMW M3. But what does this mean for us cyclists? Well, the first thing is that you stand to get potentially more punctures because it's Sir Isaac Newton's third law of motion. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction, which means because the pressure at the contact patch is higher on the ground, that force is being reflected back by any potential debris that's trying to make its way inside your tire and give you a puncture. And the other thing is the amount of wear that a tyre experiences. So on a narrower tyre, you're going to experience more wear because there's more force 
just eroding it against the road. Think of it if you've ever used a, a belt sander or just normally sanded something by hand. When you exert more force with the sandpaper, it wears down quicker, whatever it is that you're trying to sand. Now, with regards to the punctures, at this point, I'd love to be able to give you some empirical data. Unfortunately, I don't have any and I haven't been able to find any. But speaking anecdotally, as someone that's spent most of my life riding on 23 millimeter tires, I definitely get far fewer punctures these days riding wider tires. And speaking to Alex, he agrees it's the same. But, you know, to, to what extent that is modern tire technology being better and having better puncture protection, that probably too does play a part. But I really can count the number of punctures I've had in the last 12 months on one hand, less than one hand really. I mean, it's, I think I've had like two and I do about 20,000 kilometers a year. So a 28 millimeter tire at six bar, that's about 87 PSI, and a load of 60 kilograms has a contact patch of 842 millimeters squared. And this is compared with 1,021 millimeters squared if you're at five bar, which is about 70 PSI. Now that's almost a 20% difference going from 87 to 72 PSI, which is absolutely loads when you're wanting to maximize grip in the corners or in the wet. The trouble is you're gonna struggle to run a 23 millimeter tire at lower pressures without risking pinch flats all the time where the tire just compresses too much against the rim and causes you to get a puncture. But running wider tires has other benefits too. And we've spoken about these in, in other videos and many of you will be aware of them. There's the added comfort, lower rolling resistance. I mean, I'm, I'm yet to find someone who's switched from 23 or 25 to wider 28s or 30s and doesn't prefer it. A testament to that, it's, it's become the norm. It's what everyone in the Tour de France is riding and the Tour de France has been won this year on wide tires, 28 millimeters. Now, according to Pirelli, the size of the tire, so the width and the pressure that's in it are the biggest factors when determining the rigidity of the tire. So therefore the, the overall size of the contact patch. The actual structure of the tire and the construction of it plays a part too, but that's much, much less to a much smaller degree. Now, we also know that the pressure inside has a big impact on the pressure mapping of that contact patch as well. So not only is the contact patch wider when you run a lower pressure, but the actual pressure distribution over that patch is much more even with the pressure spread out much more. Whereas if you say run 90 PSI in a 28 millimeter tire, the contact patch will be about 20% smaller as we've mentioned, but also the pressure distribution is much more concentrated right down the middle of that contact patch. So in the middle, the pressure is far higher than it is towards the sides. Whereas if you were running 70 PSI, it would be much more even across the entire patch. Another really interesting detail, but this is really nerdy, but I love it, is the effect of running either tubeless or running an inner tube. So. Pirelli's preliminary investigations into this suggest that if you run a 28 millimeter tire at five bar, so 72 PSI, and you run that with an inner tube, it's actually, the contact patch becomes 8% smaller compared to if you ran it tubeless. And well, the, the, the theory is that the inner tube is perhaps contributing to the rigidity of the tire and it's sort of contributing to the internal structure, making it a bit more rigid and therefore the tire is deforming less and making your contact patch a little bit smaller. Weirdly though, when they tested this at higher pressures, so six bar, you know, 87 PSI and above, they found that using an inner tube resulted in a slightly bigger contact patch which is kind of a bit strange, uh, by only 1.2% though, so very small amount, but still quite strange. The difference is though, is I think most of us aren't gonna be running 28 millimeter tires at around 90 PSI. Um, certainly if you follow like Pirelli's, uh, you know, tire pressure calculator, or if you use the Silca tire pressure calculator, you're, you know, you should be running your tires at the correct pressure. You're much likely to be running them in that more sort of 70 PSI ballpark, at which point then running them tubeless is going to give you a slightly bigger contact patch and 
in theory, reduce that pressure and also uh, make your tyres last a bit longer. It's really intriguing all of this to me. And one of the, the big take home messages that the Pirelli researchers gave me while I was there was that they reckon that tyre pressure and contact patch is so important that a cheap tyre, uh, so we take one of their low end models like the, the, the P7 versus their best model like the, the RS, the cheap tyre run at the optimum pressure will outperform the best tyre run at a terrible pressure, which I think is fascinating. So definitely make sure that you get your pressures right. And it has other ramifications too, because different compounds need to perform differently at, at, at different pressures. So you, there's a lot of research that goes into Formula One tyre compounds and, and performance car tyre compounds. And they might be great, you know, on, on a car and have really low rolling resistance, but those compounds are then placed in a completely different environment when they're on a bike, arguably a harsher, more demanding environment because they face so much more contact patch pressure, but it has potentially other big impacts as well. So you could take a, a compound which was really good on a performance car tire and has really low rolling resistance, but when you place it on a bike, it might not work as well because the pressure demands become so much more different. You know, a very soft car compound tire would probably wear quite quickly on a bike because, well, it's just got so much more pressure uh, on it compared to a car tire. But better understanding what's going on allows you to be able to develop you know, better things in the future, which I think is really exciting. And I hope you found this interesting, um, certainly as much as I have. It's proper nerdy, but I love it. If you want to find out more about tyres and different tyre widths and how to optimise pressure, we've got loads of videos here on GCN Tech, so be sure to subscribe and also check those out. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next one. I love you. Bye.